In this lesson, we're going to look at proofs that are not valid. Consider the following statement. There are, I guess that would say, three errors in this statement. Is this statement valid? So take a few minutes to think about that. So after reading this, you might be going around in circles. Because you can see that there's one error in the spelling of three, and there's one error in the spelling of errors. But then, if you take into consideration the entire statement, then there's actually more than two errors because the statement itself is an error. So that means that the statement is valid. So this is why I wrote here, this is statement is circular argument. There are only two errors. If the statement itself is invalid, then the statement is an error, making a total of three errors. But if the statement contains three errors, making it valid, then the statement cannot be both valid and invalid. So it's a bit of a mess, right? So if we look at that, we can apply it to this first example here. It says using reasoning to determine the validity of an argument. So it says here that athletes do not compete in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. Haley Wickenheiser has represented Canada four times in the Winter Olympics. Therefore, Haley Wickenheiser has not participated in the Summer Olympics. Now, Tia read the statement and knew that there was an error. Identify the error in the reasoning. Well, unless you did a bit of research or knew this athlete quite well, you wouldn't really maybe find what that error is. But after some research, we actually can find that there have been 18 athletes that have competed in both, at least 18, that have competed in both Olympic seasons. So specifically, if we look up Haley Wickenheiser, we can see that she plays ice hockey and softball. So ice hockey in 1998, in 2002, in 2006, and 2010, and softball in 2000. So she's definitely played in both seasons. So this means that the statement is false because she's represented Canada in both winter and summer Olympics. Now this wouldn't be a test question, but it's a good way to see that just a little bit of research you can figure out the information that you're looking for so that would definitely be okay as an assignment question for you to be able to go and do that little bit of research here's another example it says zach is a high school student all high school students dislike cooking therefore zach dislikes cooking where is the error in the reasoning seems fine to me at first glance but the error is actually in the second statement. It says all high school students dislike cooking. Well, we know that not all high school students dislike cooking. There must be some high school students that like cooking. So if that statement's false, then that makes our entire statement false. So if there's a false assumption in your conjecture, then that means your entire conjecture is false, but just based on that false assumption. Let's take a look at example two. It says, using reasoning to determine the validity of a proof. Bev claims that he can prove that three equals four. So here's Bev's proof. It says, suppose that a plus b equals c. The statement can be written as 4a minus 3a plus 4b minus 3b equals 4c minus 3c. After reorganizing, we've got this statement using the distributive property and then dividing both sides, he gets that four is equal to three. Now, show that Bev has written an invalid proof. An invalid proof, let's go ahead and have a look at that. It's really similar to what we just did. An invalid proof is a proof that contains an error in reasoning or that contains invalid assumptions. So invalid assumptions or invalid reasoning, very much like this example at the bottom here, right? All high school students dislike cooking. That's an invalid assumption. 
A premise is a statement that is assumed to be true. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate this into proof and comment. So here's the proof on this side, and here's the comment. And the comment is going to be an explanation or a comment about what we're doing on the other side. And we're going to be able to figure out where that error is. So the proof says that A plus B is equal to C. And a variable can be represented by any number, so Bev's premise is valid. Then he says that 4a minus 3a, which that would be 1a, plus 4b minus 3b, subtract those, that gives you b, is equal to 4c minus 3c, and that would be equal to c. So that looks okay, right? 4a minus 3a is a, 4b minus 3b is b and 4c minus 3c. No issues there. Then he reorganizes it. So it gets all the 4s together and all the 3s together. So we've got 4a plus 4b and then the 4c comes to the other side so it changes signs. And then same with the c. So I've got, or sorry, the 3s. Move the negative 3 over so it becomes a positive 3a move the negative 3b over, that becomes a positive 3b, and I've got a negative 3c on this side. So the reorganizing is correct. Okay, so then factors out the 4. Common factoring on both sides. So take the 4 out, left with a plus b minus c, Factor out the 3, a plus b minus c. Common factoring is fine. So right now it seems like everything's okay. Maybe 4 is equal to 3. So it produces a valid statement. Okay, then there's another premise, okay? The premise is that A plus B minus C, no, A plus B is equal to C, right? A plus B is equal to C. That's the original premise at the very beginning. Right? And that would mean that a plus b minus c is equal to zero. Okay, so at this point, the divisor is a plus b minus c is equal to zero. So if we rearrange the premise, we see that the divisor is equal to zero. Okay, because what happens is on both sides here, just using another color, divides through by a plus b minus c divides through here, a plus b minus c, right? And if they divide that through, then 4 is equal to 3. But if the divisor is equal to 0, we know that when you divide by 0, that means that the answer is undefined. So that means that the statement is not valid. Dividing both sides of the equation by a plus b minus c is not 
in fact, valid. And if that's not valid, then Bev has written an invalid proof. All right, so go back and have a look again. So we've got this proof, and at first glance, up until the very end, everything looks really good. But then when we go back and look at the premise and divide both sides out, we can see when we rearrange it that that premise, when rearranged, is equal to zero. And if you divide by zero, that's an invalid statement because your answer is going to be undefined. So the proof can't be based on an invalid premise. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Example three, using reasoning to determine the validity of a proof. So we continue to do this. It says Liz claims that she has proved that 25 is equal to 5. I assume that negative 5 is equal to 5. Then I squared both sides. I got a true statement. This means my assumption negative 5 equals 5 must be correct. But Liz started out with a false assumption. Negative 5 is not equal to 5. And everything that came after that is false then because she used a false statement to start with. If an assumption is not true, then any argument that was built on the assumption is not valid. We talked a little bit earlier about circular reasoning. Circul circular reasoning is an argument that's incorrect because it makes use of the conclusion to be proved. And that's exactly what she did, right? This is what she wanted to prove, so she started with that and ended up with what she started with, which is invalid. So how is an error in a premise like a counterexample? Well, a single error invalidates the argument. No matter what the error is, it's the error in the premise, it's the error in the assumption, right? And in the same way, a single counterexample makes a conjecture invalid. All right, let's take a look at the last example in our notes here. Hasai is trying to prove the following number trick. Choose any number, add 3, double it, add 4, divide by 2, take away the number you started with. Each time Hasai tries the trick, she ends up with 5. Her proof, however, does not give the same result. Where is the error in Hasai's proof? Okay, so if we look through this, see if you can figure out where the mistake is. Choose any number n, that's fine add 3, so that's n plus 3, double it. So I'd have to multiply everything by 2, so that would give me 2n plus 6, because the n has to be given to both, uh, sorry, the 2 has to be given to both the n and the 3. So I'm at, I've chosen a number, I've added 3, I've doubled it. Now I have to add 4. Well, like terms tell me that I'm just adding it there. So that'd be, whoops, 2n plus 10, so that's add 4, then divide by 2. So divide by 2 means this, or 2n divided by 2 plus 10 divided by 2, which would give me n plus 5. Well, she's got n, 2n plus 5, and then n plus 5, take away the number you started with. Well, what did we start with? We started with n. So if I subtract n, those n's cancel out and I end up with 5, which is exactly what we wanted. So we can see that this is where the error is. The error is in this section here where she only divided the 2n, sorry, she only divided the 10 by 2, not the 2n by 2. So she's left with an extra n that she didn't need in there. So that's where the error is. Let's write it out a little. So in words, the error in her proof is when she divides by 2, and I've shown the math a little bit more explicitly, then when she takes away the number, 
she started with, she'll get 5. n plus 5 minus n is equal to 5. And that happens too. Sometimes you write a proof and you just make a little mistake and then it doesn't work out. And then you're thinking maybe it's an invalid proof, but in fact you just made a little mistake. Lastly here it says, is there a number that will not work in her number trick? And the answer is no, because the proof is showing that n can be any number, and as a result, you're always going to get a 5 out of there. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.